As the Arthur J. Kenya Dean, it is my honor to open the Charles Woodger School of Law session of the 180th annual commencement of Villanova University and the 68th exercise at which Juris Doctor degrees will be conferred. The 42nd commencement exercise at which the Master of Laws and Taxation degrees will be conferred and the second exercise at which the Master of Taxation degrees will be conferred by the law school. And the first time at this ceremony, in addition to the Juris Doctor, the joint degrees of Master of Business Administration and Masters of Public Administration will be conferred by the law school. Father Aldo Potencio, the law school's chaplain, will lead us in the invocation. Please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the national anthem, which will be performed by Janine Dunlap Kaya, our Director of Public Service and Pro Bono Initiatives here at the law school. Good and loving God, as we celebrate this special moment in the life of our graduating students, we first give you thanks for all the blessings you have given us. We thank you for the blessing of family that loves and supports us, the blessing of friends, colleagues, professors, and staff who accompany us in this journey where we have become the persons we are today. Your servant, St. Augustine, said, Late have I loved you, beauty so old and so new. Late have I loved you. And see, you were within, and I was outside, seeking you there. Loving God, in the busyness of life, in a world that calls us in many different ways, through many different voices, may we be able to pay attention to your voice, your voice of silence in our hearts. May we not be discouraged, but instead find solace in the comfort of your presence, in the silence that brings us peace. In a world where violence and hurt are realities we face, may we still find beauty, may we still find you. St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. As we leave this community and face the change of tomorrow, may you enlighten us always so that we will remember that what we truly need and what we truly desire is you. May we never be lost in our pursuit of you. In a world where we try to find rest in the things we see, we hear, and we touch, may you continue to inflame our hearts to not find rest and to keep yearning for you. And even as we pursue you, may we always be one with you. St. Augustine said, do not be content with what you are if you want to become what you are not yet. For where you have grown pleased with yourself, there you will remain. Today, as our graduating students celebrate the fruits of their work, the sacrifices they and their loved ones have made, May they not lose sight of the work that you continue to do within them. May they be pleased, not only of the things you have done in them, but also with the promise of who they are to become through your continuing work in them. May the work that you do in our hearts and our beings remind us of mercy and compassion, gifts that we can share as we serve one another. May you continue to bless us and may we be blessings for others. We pray, Lord, in your name. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the
Please be seated. That was wonderful. Thank you, Janine. On behalf of the faculty, I welcome and salute the class of 2023. I welcome the families and friends. Yeah, let's hear for them. I welcome the families and friends of the graduates because without your support, the class of 2023 would not be here today. Before proceeding, let me introduce the Reverend Peter M. Donahue, president of Illinois University on the stage with me today. Thank you for all of your support of the law school. <clears throat> We gather today to celebrate the personal and academic achievements of the candidates for Juris Doctor degrees, the Master of Laws in Taxation degrees, Master of Taxation degrees, the joint degrees of JDMBA and JDMPA, and to honor the outstanding professional achievements of our Medallion Award recipient. This year, the law school is proud to present our Medallion Award to an especially worthy recipient, the Honorable Judge James E. Bosberg the Chief Judge of the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. Michael Risch, the Vice Dean, will introduce Chief Judge Bosberg. Chief Judge Bosberg, Dean Risch, please join us. James E. Jeb Bosberg became Chief Judge of the United States District Court for the District of Columbia on March 17, 2023. He was originally appointed to the District Court in March of 2011. Chief Judge Bosberg is a native Washingtonian, having graduated from St. Albans School in 1981. He received a BA, magna cum laude, in history in 1985 from Yale College, where he also played basketball. You couldn't tell. Uh, Chief Judge Bosberg then received uh, an M. What is the, oh, an MST in Modern European History from Oxford University in 1986 and a JD from Yale Law School in 1990. Chief Judge Bosberg next served as a law clerk to Judge Dorothy W. Nelson on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Following his clerkship. He was a litigation associate at Kecker and Van Nest in San Francisco from 1991 to 1994, and at Kellogg, Huber, Hansen, Todd, and Evans in Washington from 1995 to 1996. In 1996, Chief Judge Bosberg joined the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia as an assistant U.S. attorney, where he served for five and a half years and specialized in homicide prosecutions. In September of 2002, he became associate judge of the District of Columbia Superior Court, where he served in the Civil and Criminal Divisions and the Domestic Violence Branch until his appointment to the federal bench in 2011. Chief, Chief Judge Bosberg also served a seven-year term on the United States Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, the FISA Court, beginning in May 2014. Appointed by Chief Justice John Roberts, he was the court's presiding judge from January of 2020 to May of 2021. He is currently the president of the Edward Bennett Williams Inn of Court and a member of the Yale University Council. He is also the past chair of the governing board of St. Albans School. Father President, Dean Alexander, and members of the class of 2023, it is my honor to present Chief Judge James E. Bosberg for the Medallion Award. Thank you very much, uh, Father President, 
Thank you, Vice Dean. Uh, I'm sorry, my, I'm actually glad that my children weren't here because they might have tried to rebut some of the statements that the, the Vice Dean made. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I, I've known Dean Alexander for many years, going all the way back to our days at rival schools in Washington, D.C. So given that history, I truly hate to dime him out in front of all of you, his peers, his friends, his students, but I feel pretty strongly that there is a bait and switch going on here. When he contacted me a couple of months ago and started talking about Villanova, my mind, like that of any red-blooded sports fan, immediately turned to March Madness. After all, it was March when he contacted me, and Villanova is synonymous with basketball excellence. So I interrupted whatever else he was saying, and I said immediately, yes, I'd love to come. I hope the tickets would be near midcourt, and maybe he could even introduce me to Matty Segrist after the game. <laughs> so it was only after I'd enthusiastically accepted that he sheepishly muttered that it had nothing to do with basketball and that he was actually inviting me to speak at the law school commencement. So that's why I'm here today. I mean, I guess I should be happy that I got into the gym, uh, but I'll admit I'm still expecting some tickets. Then again, given what's going on in Washington these days, I'd probably be better off paying for those myself. Um, all right, so what can I tell you as you leave law school and head off as newly minted lawyers? That is, once you pass the bar, of course. I'd like to give you three pieces of advice. I'd actually like to give you four pieces, or maybe two pieces, but the ironclad rule of the triad governs all commencement speakers, so three it will be. Number one, don't be afraid to take some risks with your career. You sit here now, or in a few minutes, with a fancy law degree to go along with your fancy college diploma. And some of you probably have another degree on your resume as well. Yet plenty of you are no doubt thinking, the safe move is to go to a big law firm, get some training, keep my options open. But I ask you, as a first-year associate, what are you really going to be trained in doing? Going through documents to see what is responsive to overbroad discovery requests the other side made? Proofreading contracts to make sure that the client didn't misuse hyphens or apostrophes? So even if you start at a big firm, and I know you can't ignore financial considerations, you need to keep asking yourself, is this the best job for me? And as for keeping your options open, I used to joke with my friends that my tombstone might read, here lies Jeb Bozberg. He kept his options open. <laughs> so what I'm saying to you is that it is perfectly fine to actually opt and to opt for a job that is not necessarily the traditional one. Find something you're truly interested in, something that you're happy about, not just every other Friday when you check your direct deposit. Now, let's not pretend that I had all of this great wisdom when I was sitting in your shoes. After my clerkship, I also went to two law firms for a total of about five years. I can say that the firms I went to were small litigation firms instead of the typical big ones that my classmates were joining. And this was because I preferred to be a second person on a $100,000 case rather than the eighth person on a $100 million case. I wanted to learn real litigation skills, how to write a persuasive brief, how to take a deposition, how to argue a motion, and maybe even how to try a case. I have no doubt I got a lot more experience than my classmates at larger places, but five years after I'd started in private practice, I still had never tried a case. And I have to admit, I was a little tired of representing insurance companies trying to, do, to deny coverage to people who probably deserved it. So I left, and I went to the U.S. Attorney's Office in D.C. Not only had I soon tried more cases than all the associates in my prior two firms combined, but it was a job I got excited about every day. I cannot say to you that becoming an AUSA was taking a huge risk, but my larger point is that you must seek out work that is meaningful and fulfilling, work that you are passionate about. Not only will you be a better lawyer, but you will be a happier person. For over 25 years as an AUSA and then a Superior Court judge and a federal judge, I've been very fortunate to have had jobs I love, jobs that I wanted to come into the office for every day. 
There are so many different things you can do as a lawyer. I chose government service as a prosecutor, but you could perform other forms of public service in federal, state, or local government. You could do indigent criminal defense, legal aid for needy civil litigants, work fo focusing on housing, immigration, or entitlements, environmental or climate-related work, family law, or hundreds of other kinds of jobs. My bottom line is I urge you all to seek true satisfaction in your careers, and don't stop looking until you find it. My next piece of advice is to zealously guard your reputation. And I'm mainly talking about a reputation for civility, honesty, and reasonableness. In Othello, Shakespeare's play most concerned with reputation, the defamer Iago knows this well. He says, good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Cassio later agrees, reputation, reputation, reputation. Oh, I have lost my reputation. I have lost the immortal part of myself, and what remains is bestial. These are not exaggerations. When I was in AUSA talking with colleagues about our cases, whom did we talk about? The defense lawyer and the judge. When defense lawyers talk, they talk about the prosecutor and the judge. And guess what? When we judges sit down to lunch and talk about cases, the first thing we ask is, who are the lawyers on your case? Many times, one of us says to the other, you're lucky, she's really good. Or equally, too bad, I've had some issues with him skirting ethical lines. I promise you, you want to be in that first category, not the second. You want the judge in your case to be able to say what you, to take what you say as an officer of the court to the bank. Equally important, you want your adversary to be able to trust your word. If they don't, you'll have a much more difficult relationship and you will end up creating a lot more work for yourself. I remember cases where prosecutors, who often have the lion's share of the power, would be unpleasant to defense lawyers and rebuff reasonable requests for pleas or discovery. That was so short-sighted because the next time around, that same defense lawyer might represent the cooperator who is your key witness. But, they will, but they'll tell their client not to help you because they don't like you or they don't trust you. Litigation is by nature an adversarial process with much opportunity for disputes, large and small. But there's no reason not to deal with each other in civilized fashion. I remember as a judge telling litigants who were bickering over some small stakes case that I used to try murder cases and had respectful relationships with the defense counsel, meaning they should probably be able to agree on where a witness's deposition would be taken. Finally, as you age in your profession, you'll be often dependent on referrals of some kind for business, for cases, for hiring, for judicial or political appointments. Your reputation will be what guides the decision of others. The last piece of advice I give you today is try not to forget that the person on the other side is also a fully realized human being with a life outside of work with parents and siblings and children and illnesses and frailties just like you. Indeed, a vibrant life outside of work is something you need to ensure applies to you as well. I know that Dean Alexander and your whole community at Villanova has emphasized how important it is to have a community that treats each other with respect and cares about each other, that embodies your motto of veritas, unitas, caritas. But you can't just talk the talk. You have to walk the walk. Now, I like to run a very efficient courtroom. I expect lawyers to be on time, to make their points concisely, and to be prepared. If I've set a hearing or a trial, I expect the lawyers to be ready and able to proceed. I remember one time years ago when I was a judge in D.C. Superior Court and a fairly minor matter was up for trial. I did my perfunctory trial call asking the lawyers if their witnesses were present and if they were ready to go. The defense lawyer, a pleasant and competent man I'd seen a number of times before, said he was not ready and would like to approach the bench. I rolled my eyes, sighed audibly in frustration, and asked him if this hadn't been set for trial a month ago. He admitted as much. I asked him if his client didn't deserve a fair trial with competent counsel. He nodded and asked again to approach the bench for a sidebar. I grudgingly agreed, put on the husher so no one else could hear, and when he came forward, asked him rather pointedly what the problem was. With great emotion in his voice, he told me that his wife had just miscarried, that there had been medical complications, and they'd been in the hospital all weekend long, and he wasn't able to prepare for the case. 
Unfortunately, there were no holes on the bench for me to crawl into to hide my shame that day. I was at a judge's conference earlier this month in Washington, and a federal judge from Oklahoma told me that when he first took the bench as a new judge, he saw a sign taped to his writing surface that no one else in the courtroom could see. It said, Yaf Jalo, Y-A-A-F-J-A-L-O. He couldn't figure out what this could possibly mean, so after his matter was concluded, he went to the judge whose courtroom it was and asked what Yaf Jalo meant. The judge said it is an acronym he wished to think about whenever he was on the bench. It stands for, you are a federal judge, act like one. That is what I aspire to do every day, and I know that all of you will aspire to be the kind of lawyer that your law school and your community can be proud of. Good luck to you, and congratulations all. Thank you so much, Chief Judge Boasberg. I now present Kevin Shepard II of the class of 2023. I guess I should have said Kevin Shepard II, the man who needs no introduction, from the class of 2023 selected by his classmates to deliver the student commencement address. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to first start by saying welcome and thank you to Father Peter, to Dean Alexander, to Chief Judge Bosberg, to the outstanding faculty and staff of Villanova University Charles Widger School of Law, and most importantly to the friends and family of my graduating class, the Villanova Law Class of 2023. At this time, I ask for everyone under the sound of my voice in attendance this morning to please shower these amazing students in front of you with a round of applause. When drafting the speech, <laughs> when drafting the speech, I thought to myself, how can I bother Kyle Shepard today? Kyle is my brother, my younger brother. He's pursuing his doctorate from Delaware State University and inspires me every day to be a better version of myself. But most importantly, Kyle hates attention. So before I continue, can everyone on the count of three say, hey, Kyle? Hey, Kyle. <laughs> Thank you. Kyle also spoke at his commencement when he received his master's. So in my defense, I had to do something to set myself apart. But all jokes aside, when drafting this speech, I thought to myself, how can I celebrate the class of 2023? What can I say to my classmates, which not only reflects my appreciation for them, but underscores the precise magnitude of this very moment? Throughout my term as president of the Student Bar Association, I pushed the importance of legacy. In the words of renowned author and activist, Maya Angelou, if you're going to live, leave a legacy. Make a mark on the world that can't be erased. However, when reflecting on her quote over the course of this past year, I realized I may have misinterpreted how one leaves their mark. After all, what does legacy mean to you? In my opinion, instead of it being proactive deed on behalf of oneself, leaving a legacy may require you to appreciate and become comfortable with results which are not immediately realized. In fact, the fruits of your labor may not realize in your tenure or your lifetime. Therefore, legacy is not necessarily an achievement, but a mile marker. And I use the term mile marker with severe intention because legacy sets the pace for every person to follow behind you. Moreover, as the pace setter, you are running and competing in a marathon of sorts which spans across your entire life and involves every potential obstacle, trap, or pitfall placed in your way. Think of the obstacles you faced. Just as the class of 2023, the world experienced a crippling global pandemic called COVID-19. And what did we do? We said to ourselves, you know what this pandemic needs? It needs cold calls, 100-page reading assignments, crippling anxiety, and something called rules against perpetuity to really spice things up around here. Nevertheless, each of you approached these obstacles and mile markers with grace, persistence, collaboration, and perhaps a little dark humor and sarcasm. 
Furthermore, we reach this very moment during which you sit here in front of us, by definition, undefeated. You have conquered and triumphed over 100% of your worst days, including the ones where you may have been on call for Professor Brogan's torts class and didn't read the assigned readings. <laughs> for those victories and countless others, I remain humbled, inspired, and in awe of each and every one of you. So what does that say about your legacy? How will your mark on this world be left as you leave one of the law for the next chapter of your respective lives? Well, like everything in law school, it depends. The response to that is something only you can answer. Still, my ask for each of you is that you continue this marathon and that you continue running your race and your race alone. No one else's. When it came to raising his family and creating wealth for his community, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, activists, and artists was Nipsey Hussle. He once posted to his social media the following, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable man persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. To compete in this marathon, you will have to maintain a slight sense of delusion, an air of unwavering confidence in your future success so resolute that to some it may sound unreasonable and downright impossible. Yet I know by standing here in front of you today that impossible is just an opinion, because on this seemingly unreasonable journey, amidst a deadly pandemic of global proportion, each of you held strong as you collectively approached this next mile marker of our marathon. We took our injuries in stride, and we supported and uplifted one another when times were hard, whether they were during losses, misfortunes, or setbacks. And for that, you earn this celebration. Bask in it. Enjoy it. Live in the moment and be present. And in the words of the late Nipsey Hussle, the marathon continues. But tonight we take our victory lap. Rest in peace to my grandfather, Hedrick Shepard, and congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you very much, Kevin. And with great pride, I now call forward the JD graduates. Associate Dean Andrew Lund will assist in the distribution of their diplomas. Rachel Emily Wolfman. Anna Maria Blanco Rigaud. Jean Claire M. Perini. Sarah E. Gimble. Caroline E. Keefe. Grace Elizabeth Wagner. Maureen Ann O'Kane. Sarah Marie Kirkpatrick. Joseph Travis. Matthew A. Skolnick.
Rachel Montgomery File. Samantha Spice. Isabel Alexandra Roman. Angela Redding. Samantha Jane Kramig. Kelly Ann Gresh. Nicholas J. Galuzzo. Alexander S. Hubschmidt. Caitlin R. Cannon. Nicole Marie Panock. Brianna D. Smalley. Madeline Van Dorp. Natalie May Poyer. Sean Skedzilevsky. Amin Tamimi. Nicholas James Alakata. Ryan T. Kowalski. Amit Prasanna Mysore. Terence Keller McGurn. Joseph W. Brucker. Destiny Larray Markel Speaks. Taylor N. Henderson. Michael Joseph Harding. Kevin Mark Shepard II. Favor Ugochi Okechuku. Naomi K. Minhas. Kimberly S. Baxter. Lily Rachel Haddad. Rebecca Charis Mills. Margaret Cross Riddle. Alessandra Morgan Brainard. Saraswati H. Desai. Casey McCann. Woo! 
Brianna C. Vetter. Ryan Matthews Phillips. Lindsay Ray Norton. Mary McDermott. Edward James Riling. Madeline J. Finney. Riley E. Cook. Domenica Bridget Tomasetti. Allison A. Toll. Evan Baker. Sophie Davish. Elizabeth C. Vista. Kaylee Ann Lawler. Bryce Eric Knutson. Joshua C. Harris. Jessica Kaczynski. Lindsay Brock Marcus. Stella Pratt. Zachary R. Moniz. Nathan H. Coffing. Ryan Kovacovich. Kenneth Steenland. Brendan Brown. Evan Butts. Ryan C. Thomas. Elizabeth Michelle Kletzel. Sarah Zhang Manning. Angela Claire Boyer. Alicia Marie Broderick. Crystal Yachts. Nicholas Moroz. Seth Benjamin Wasserman. Joseph Patrick Harold Metzger. Patrick T. Ferris. Alec Prescott Fonte. Michael Ralph Noto, Jr. 
Ilana Lee Solomon. John Murphy Spadaro. Ethan Henry Schutzman. Harlan Gerald Dobson. Ross Sutton. Griffith Lee Hawk. Lee McLinden. Kathleen Elizabeth Spillen. Rebecca Haley Sims. Dante Lewis Camilli. Allison Eileen Gotthold. Margot Whites. Rachel Victoria Sweeney. Tyler Edward Kessner. Juliet Mogensen. Timothy H. Keith. Jonathan D. Quagliarello. Jack Arrington Chenoweth. Lauren Julia Fisher. Clara Daniela Bienyash. Amanda Monira Daoud. Jacqueline Ann Borelli. Braden Wyckoff McKee. Melissa Kristen Durante. Jack McGuire. William Norman Mercier II. Brianna Jane Sullivan. Anjali V. Tipperneni. Samantha Nicole Newman. Natalie Anderson. Haley Rose Norwillow. Asha Steele. Jessica Whalen. Taylor Elisa Malatesta. Sophia Mary Chernyetsky. Danielle Alyssa Clifford. Brittany K. Mann.
Stephen X. Gray. Christopher DeWeese. Jordan R. Inver. Daniel J. Thomas. Craig Gamble. Zachary Ryan Lawler. Luke Chiano. David Egan Rossman. Sydney Cockler. Hannah Rice. Darby Noel Baliga. Alexandra Virginia Romano. Taylor Alexa Borguignon. Lisa McConnell. Colin Sykes. Emily Knight. Mallory Marie Shoemaker. Caitlin M. Becta. Noel Gambali. Catherine Marjorie Stifler. Elizabeth A. Straining. Jack Joseph Brinker. Theodore G. Kotler. Danny Rose Goldberg. Matthew Devlin Dacey. Thomas J. Hawk. Andrew R. Schwartz. Emily Catherine Rollo. Maggie McDonald. Catherine Margaret Capizzi. John Justice Nelson. Santino G. Pelusi. Scott Antanasio Kingsbury. Amanda Riaboli. Josie Marie Richards. Martha Osisek. Ariana Nicola Pompey.
Zoe Elizabeth Schloss. Brendan Timothy Mullen. Jarrett James Dunaghy. Michael Reed. Ashley N. Campbell. Kelly Ann Rubino. Luke Antonio Pachifachi. Spencer G. D. Uriosti. Chloe Vollmer. Page Zira. <laughs> Olivia Yvonne Klein. <laughs> Andrew Joseph Delzato. <laughs> John William Hurley. Grace Polisano. Maeve C. Heyer. Christopher J. Rapolo. And now, Associate Professor of Practice Stephen Olson, the Faculty Director of the Graduate Tax Program, will assist in the distribution of the degrees for the Master of Laws in Taxation. Misty A. Toothman. <laughs> Catherine Sweeney Smith. <laughs> Angela Suzanne Beck Giscombe. Alexis Nicole Turner Garris. Travis Greer Maurer. Rachel Montgomery File. Professor Olson will now assist in the degrees, distribution of the degrees for the Master of Taxation. Henry Johnson, Jr. <laughs> Jennifer Sheely. <laughs> Chui Ying Jiang. <laughs> Komal Yogesh Date.
Emily Eubanks Zemer. Thomas Bayer, Jr. Jennifer Ellen Belanger. Ted Daniel John. Brian Anthony DeGuilme. Foster F. Reed. William Russell Harding. Jonathan Schaefer. Tatiana Sodol. Larry Belton, Jr. David John Pearson. Dana N. Page. Christiana Onita Olojo. Roxana Guadalupe Ramos Sors. William Harold Bender the second. Dustin Joseph Bender. Justin Robert Hirsch. Kevin Richard Birdsall. Adam Gottesfeld. Abdullah Zubair. Lisa M. Borelli. James Thomas Diker. Dr. Wen Mao, the incoming Helen and William O'Toole Dean of the Villanova School of Business, will assist in the distribution of the degrees for the Master of Business Administration. Jack Joseph Brinker. Thomas J. Hawk. Amit Prasanna Mysore. Isabel Alexandra Roman. Kevin Mark Shepard, the second. Dr. Emery Woodard, the fourth, grad dean of graduate studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, will assist in the distribution of the degrees for the Master of Public Administration.
Noel Gambali. Evan Butts. University President Father Peter Donahue will now confer the Juris Doctor degrees. Candidates who have been approved for the degree, please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. Father President, I present for the degree of Juris Doctor the candidates who have been approved by the faculty and whose names are on the official list for graduation. In our program, you will note the names of the candidates who will graduate cum laude and magna cum laude. Deserving of special attention are the following two individuals who will graduate summa cum laude, Sarah Marie Kirkpatrick and John Justice Nelson. By the authority committed to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Juris Doctor, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which throughout the world pertain to that degree. In testimony whereof, you have received the diploma of Villanova University, officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Congratulations. seated, J.D. candidates. Lovely applause there. Yes. University President Father Peter Donahue will now confer the degrees of Master of Laws in Taxation. Candidates who have been approved for that degree, please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. Father President, I present for the degree of Masters of Laws in Taxation the candidates who have been approved by the faculty and whose names are on the official list for graduation. By the authority committed to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Laws in Taxation, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which throughout the world pertain to that degree. In testimony whereof, you have received the diploma of Villanova University, officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Congratulations. University President Father Peter Donahue will now confer the degrees of Master of Taxation. Candidates who have been approved for that degree, please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. Father President, I present for the degree of Master of Taxation the candidates who have been approved by the faculty and whose names are on the official list for graduation. By the authority committed to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Taxation, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which throughout the world pertain to that degree. In testimony whereof, you have received the diploma of Villanova University, officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Congratulations.
University President Father Peter Donahue will now confer the degrees of Master of Business Administration. Candidates who have been approved for that degree, please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. Father President, I present for the degree of Master of Business Administration the candidates who have been approved by the faculty and whose names are on the official list for graduation. The next two are the group of overachievers in this class. <laughs> by the authority committed to me by the trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Business Administration. Uh, yeah, admitting you to all the rights and privileges with throughout the world pertain to that degree, in testimony whereof you have received the diploma of Villanova University, officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Congratulations. <laughs> University President Father Peter Donahue will now confer the degrees of Master of Public Administration. Candidates who have been approved for that degree, please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. Father President, I present for the degree of Master of Public Administration the candidates who have been approved by the faculty and whose names are on the official list for graduation. By the authority committed to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon the both of you the Master of Public Tra Administration, admitting you to the rights and privileges which throughout the world pertain to that degree. In testimony whereof, you have received the diploma of the university, officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Congratulations. I always uh, remark at the fact that we have all of these people getting degrees in taxation, and they really never get the applause that everybody else gets. So would all those people that receive degrees in taxation please stand. See, you are loved, <laughs> at least for today. In many ways, August 2020 seems miles away for all of you. And much has happened in your lives and the life of the Villanova community, our nation, and our world. Yet, in, yet it is important that we acknowledge and honor your accomplishments and the journey you took through law school. You found your place at Villanova serving the greater good and making lifelong friendships that will stand the test of time and through future pandemics. By this point in your lives, you realize that as one journey ends, another one will begin. Each of you are a different place in your life. Naturally, there is apprehension, excitement, and promise. Those qualities fuel the excitement that lies ahead of each of you. You know what to expect, and you know how to face it. As you move on, I hope you will stand, still hold a part of Villanova within you. Remain rooted, but restless. Continue to reflect on who you are, where you have been, and what you wish to become. You are different from when you started. Villanova Law School has transformed you and prepared you with a foundation for success. No matter what path you may follow, there will be roadblocks and detours. Do not let them stop you. Consider the public and personal events you have encountered along the way and reflect on how they have challenged you, how they've inspired you, made you stronger, and helped you appreciate your blessings. The COVID pandemic forced a global lockdown, canceled events, and life postponed. 
the premier, premature death of millions, heated debates on the value of vaccination, and a greater appreciation for the value we place on relationships. National divisions over election results, personal choice, freedom of speech, college administration, and drug safety. Continued calls for racial justice, the struggle and tension to dismantle systems and defund organizations. The escalation of gun violence against family, friends, neighbors, and strangers. The Capitol building attacked, a war in Ukraine, millions of people displaced from their homes in fears of dis fears and disputes on, Im Im on immigration from a nation built upon immigrants. A political system that seems more reactive than proactive. People are still looking for lasting solutions that have yet to be found. There is much work to be accomplished. This is the journey, the journey you are becoming and what you are not yet, what you have struggled to understand and embrace during your time at Villanova must propel your future. As members of an Augustinian community, a community that moves forward, a community that is not complacent, a community that believes the best way to improve our own life is improving the lives of others. People will say, this is idealistic. Prove them wrong. You realize that through the pursuit of knowledge, you find truth. Through a supportive, inclusive community, you achieve unity. And by placing others first, you will know love. A community weaves truth, unity, and love into the fabric of our lives. A community comprehends that veritas, unitas, and caritas are more than words stamped on a seal. Some say such community is unattainable. Prove them wrong. To be an Augustinian is to believe that you are all, that we are all in this together, that each of us empowers the other. These factors impact your lives, and how you wrestle with them will determine the direction of your journey. You can make conscious decisions to change your lives, to select your relationships, to confront your beliefs, and challenge your values. You have, come, you have the freedom to determine your place in history and the community. You can embrace the courage to celebrate your accomplishments, to acknowledge your failures, to comfort your pain, and to realize that you have the power to heal the ruptures in society and build something new. Every day you will be faced with change and appreciating that fact, you can become designers, not destroyers. If the unknown causes fear and anxiety, it will prevent you from moving forward. You will encounter those who resist change because it disrupts communities. Prove them wrong. You will be amazed at how a selfless attitude can spark a lifelong passion for service and research that enhances the greater good. It is about selflessness and charity. Leave behind the faults and strive always for what is better. People will ridicule your aspirations. Prove them wrong. Since 1842, Villanova University has been educating individuals to hold a sacred, a sacred mission. Let me share a few more lessons with you. First, be honest with others, and especially with yourself. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Admit that you are when you are wrong, and do not gloat when you are right. Protect your environment. Remember, there are other people who will need it, and they may be your children. Heal the hurts in others, and heal the hurts in you. Do not wallow in hatred. Try to be the first to forgive. Talk to people, not at them. There are times when you will need to mute yourselves. Do not just hear, learn to listen. Pay attention to who is around you. Stop texting when you are with other people. In fact, be smarter than the device and talk to someone. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus developed a very simple plan for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Love others as you wish to be loved. Stop complicating it. Allow yourself to love and to be loved. Find a job that you enjoy. Do not be afraid of change and challenge yourself to make every day better. 
If you followed my train of thought, these lessons echo what every Villanovan knows. Veritas, unitas, and caritas. I pray that every day you will find ways to ignite change in yourselves and in others. Over the years, you have journeyed together. You have supported and confronted, agreed and disagreed with each other. You have laughed and cried, debated and cheered together. You have taught and learned from one another. Together, you have grown. You are different because of this encounter. You have, made, we have, been, you have been poets and prophets, saints and sinners. You have triumphed and failed, won and lost. But what is important, you have loaned, learned both from your successes and your failures. Do not forget that on this journey, 800 Lancaster Avenue was and will always be one of your homes. You have received the keys and the codes to open new doors and to make wherever you go another Villanova. 180 years ago, two Irish Augustinian friars took a huge risk on a dream to educate people in truth and unity and love. They had many detractors. People doubted two immigrants with no money could build an institution or instill such values. Today, you are part of more than 138,000 Villanovans around the world who embody their dream. Thank you for being a part of this community. Each of you have changed Villanova in some way. You have the tools to change how justice is embraced. You will always be in our minds and in our hearts. Congratulations, and may your journey continue to challenge and transform the status quo. May God bless you with the courage to live truth, unity, and love. Thank you, Father Peter. We are almost at the end of our 68th commencement. I'm just so honored to be with all of you. And I'll reflect on this day in a moment, but first a few thank yous. Uh, special thanks to Father Peter Donahue, Provost Pat Majidi, and the entire university administration for their never-ending support of our law school. As, as he just demonstrated with his words, Father Peter sets the tone for our university with a daily lived commitment to our core principles of veritas, unitas, and caritas, truth, unity, and love. I'm thankful for your steadfast leadership, Father. Sincere thanks to our law school staff and administration who handle the many details of running Villanova Law. As our students have walked the path toward a career in law, our staff and administration clear and tend that path, working tirelessly to ensure that it is ready for those who are on this journey. I also want to thank our faculty. They have challenged, counseled, taught, mentored, and inspired our graduates. They have gone above and beyond their commitment in their commitment to helping you, the students, the graduates, develop the skills and knowledge it takes not only to become a lawyer, but to be prepared to think creatively, advocate strategically, and champion effectively no matter your area of focus. Our faculty provide an education that considers the law from a multitude of perspectives, absent of bias, to help you embark on your careers, ready to embrace both challenges and opportunities. In particular, at this time, I would like to recognize Professors Michael Campbell, Diane Edelman, and Marianne Robinson. Will our retiring colleagues please stand? Professor, C Professor Campbell is retiring after 15 years of service. Professor Edelman has taught for 30 years here at Villanova Law. Professor Robinson has just concluded her 10th year teaching at Villanova. In addition, two are Villanova alumni, Professor Campbell with his undergraduate degree and Professor Robinson with her law degree. Individually, each has enjoyed extraordinary careers with long and impressive lists of accomplishments. Collectively, they have made our law school a far better place. I am grateful 
I know they have impacted the lives of countless students during their time with us. So congratulations and thank you for all you have done for Villanova. And now I just want to offer a few words as we take one last look around at this extraordinary group of individuals, our law school graduates, before all embark on their next chapter. So to the members of the Villanova Law Class of 2023, to all the graduates with Master of Law in Taxation, Master of Taxation, JD MBA, JD MPA, I say congratulations, you did it. You graduated law school. And I am thrilled to be joined by family and friends today. And I know that some of your time at Villanova likely was not always how you pictured it. But we have lived through these uniquely challenging times. And you have the distinction of being the first JD class to begin your 1L year in the thick of the global pandemic. You faced all unexpected challenges and not only survived, but thrived. This is a quality that no doubt will serve you, serve you very well in your future whatever your path may be. And today, I want to reflect on all that we've been given. This is a day I love. I truly love this day. Every, every year, it's one of the greatest moments that we're going to find. It's a day when we celebrate the accomplishments of the graduating class. You have your law degree, and I know from personal experience, that degree is a gateway to countless pursuits and opportunities that will serve you well beyond graduation. I hope this is a moment you will never forget. So the class of 2023, I'm proud of each and every one of you, and I hope you're proud of yourselves. And I want to share a few things I've learned about you over these past three years. You are leaders. You are leaders. Every day I see and hear how the class of 2023 reflects the critical values of principled leadership. You embody trust, respect, diligence, innovation, collaboration, you are brave and resilient. You listen to voices different from your own with curiosity and a desire to be better. We don't know where the next step in your lives will take you, but I do know that it will continue to lead you, and you will continue to lead, to think cr critically and inclusively in your careers, in your personal lives, and in your communities. I also know that you're smart, and you value intelligence in others. You excelled in high school and college and earned a coveted spot in our very challenging law school, a place where how to think about the law is as important as learning the law itself. You studied a range of subjects from constitutional law to evidence intellectual property, mastering each one along the way. You researched and wrote excellent papers and exams. You negotiated and advocated in court on behalf of clients, making insightful legal arguments. You collaborated with and challenge one another. You have shown great intellectual ability and applied it to the rigorous study of law. And the journey does not end today. I'm confident you'll remain lifelong learners of law. I also know that the class of 2023 is courageous. Intellect is critical, but it's not enough. You need to have the courage to aim for law school, aim high for Villanova. And being a lawyer, particularly a Villanova lawyer, is no walk in the park. It takes courage to be the guide, the voice, the advocate for a client. It takes courage to be a lawyer in the finest tradition of the profession. And in an ever-evolving world, you need courage. You are also compassionate. You have served in so many ways and demonstrated a deep commitment to the core principles that we talk about over and over again, truth, unity, and love. Over the last three years, you have not simply studied alongside one another, you have shared your lives with each other with respect and camaraderie. Remember, the legal profession is, de is dedicated to serving others. That requires servant leadership and genuine compassion for your client. No matter what our clients face, whether it's rising up over adversity or falling down to despair, we must always have compassion for them. We must always represent them with dignity and humanity. Remember the words that Judge Bozberg told you. I pray that you carry a spirit of kindness, thoughtfulness, and compassion with you in all your future endeavors. Villanova is indeed a school with a soul. You have heard this 
from the speakers today, Judge Boasberg's words, Father Peter's words, and Judge Boasberg, I will get you tickets. <laughs> Promise. Got witnesses to that. You know the kind of school we are. You know the future you can make ahead. So to you, I'm very proud, the graduates, but to the friends and families of the class of 2023, I also particularly want to express my gratitude to each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing these individuals with us at the Villanova University Charles Widger School of Law for these past years. I know you have such love and joy for your graduate. And while I am proud of them today, no one could be more proud than you. So thank you. So the distinguished members of the Villanova Law Class of 2023, once again, congratulations on a job well done. I'm honored and blessed to have been part of these transformative years, and I look forward to seeing where the path ahead will take you. Thank you. Following the blessing, please remain in your places while Vice Dean Michael Risch, Associate Dean Andrew Lund, Associate Dean Terry Ravenel, and Professor Stephen Olson, Marshals for the Class of 2023, lead the graduates from the Finneran Pavilion. After they have processed, we hope you can join us for a reception in honor of the graduates at the Riley Ellipse. Thank you for joining us, and congrats to the Class of 2023. Father Peter will now, now offer a blessing. Throughout the course of our heritage, when members of our community would begin a new journey of life, we, encounter, we confer a blessing on them as they set out on their way. Before we conclude today's celebration, I want to offer a prayer of blessing for all of our graduates. May God bless you and protect you. May your heart and mind be united in faith so that you may always love wisely, work creatively, laugh heartily, and live honestly. May you use your education to bring justice and peace to the world for the benefit of our human family and all of creation. And may you always know that you are loved. May God continue to bless you on your journeys. This concludes the commencement for the Charles Widger School of Law. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2023.